Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the ONOG Summer Circuit EU number seven. We just got done casting a really intense third place match. We're about to move to the finals. Look, again, I'm TJ, joined by Chucky. Man, Chucky, I still can't really get over that that last one. But Impact versus Rogers coming up next. Yeah, I'm just like curious now. I want to hear like what other people have to say about it. But we'll find that out later. As you said, we're going into the finals. Um, that was just a third place match, so. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get as intense of a series as that one was. Uh, we did see Impact had a very convincing win over uh, it was Logan in his first match. He just <laughs> 3 0'd him very convincingly, took a win with each of his decks. And uh, Roger had a bit closer of an encounter. But still, I would say, you know, it wasn't too much that it wasn't convincing. It was just once he got up 2 0, he had some pretty rough matchups to get through, and he managed to take it home in the fifth game. So. Both these players played out their matchups really strongly. Uh, they have fairly different lineups. Uh, we see Impact kind of favoring more of those aggressive decks with the Rogue, the Hunter, and Roger going for... He does have Zoo, so pretty aggressive deck there. But uh, as we talked about, he's always favored this Druid deck. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit interesting, but it works out for him. He always like puts in that Druid in place of more most people would put in Hunter, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how it's going to work for him against this lineup. Uh, Rogues usually have an okay time against Druid. I'd say it's a little bit favored for Rogue, but um, Druid can always do crazy things. And keep in mind, guys, this is the finals for EU number seven. Today is going to be sort of a double header. We are going to broadcast the NA finals as well. So after this match is over, we still have plenty more Summer Circuit action to bring to you guys today. And a lot on the line for these players in this match as well. $125 as opposed to $75 for first place. Um, and 10 world championship points are on the line. And you talked about it earlier. Impact is making that run. Roger as well. He's already got Roger a Roger but... is very well in the discussion for the, I believe it's Taiwanese server. Yeah. So he's, I'm not sure he's in first, but that would not surprise me. Uh, he has done extremely well at multiple land events, finishing, you know, second place at multiples. Uh, I don't believe he's won a land yet, but he's, Always doing extremely well. Always in the the top cuts. And, again, just carries that success over to online tournaments, making it to the finals of Opens all the time. Yeah, he works really hard. He plays in a lot of tournaments. Uh, made his name for himself playing through Opens as well. So, always have to commend that. Impact hasn't had his big breakout land performance yet. But he has also made a name for himself primarily in the Opens. So both these players, I mean, are no stranger to being in this exact type of situation. And um, I'm just curious to see who's going to be able to take it. Now, Roger had the Demon Zoo as yep. opposed to the Handlock. And I feel like I'm, that's going to work out maybe, maybe a little better. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little worse, though. Um, Impact has Patron, which I think I'd favor Handlock more over. Uh, Rogue, I feel like, is really close, and the Hunter, both are pretty bad. Um, so I'm not really sure which one you'd rather be. Maybe you'd just rather be the Zoo. Oh, come on, Rogue has favorable matchups against everything. Everything, yeah, my everything. bad. Rogue is just the best class. Well, it's it's kind of funny. You talked about Rogue versus Druid. They both do very similar things. Uh, like, Rogue has preparation, Druid has innervate. They both do kind of the same thing. They cheat your way ahead. And uh, whenever I talk about that matchup to players, it's like whichever way they're on, like I'll talk to it to like Dog and he'll be like, oh no, you can't lose as long as you draw prep. And if you t talk to like a Druid player, like, oh no, you can't lose as long as you draw Innervate. It's like, yeah. hmm, so you're saying it's close. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, though, is rogues have more ways to counter the heavy, the, the cheating your way ahead as you put yeah. it. Than do druids have, do against rogue. Well, they do have sap, but I mean, sap has kind of lost a little bit of its luster since the old days. Like it's been still very good against ancient war. So like, if you get a sap on ancient war, you're really happy. But uh, like Doctor Boom is one of those cards that rogues don't have a great way of dealing with. But it looks yeah. like our first matchup uh, won't have a rogue in it quite yet. Impact's gonna lead off with Patron and Roger. We will find out shortly. He is also Warrior, so we're going to have another one of those mirror matches of the Patron Warriors. Yeah. Um, 
And once again, this matchup pretty much comes down to the player that gets initiative on the board. If one player can make patrons and the other player doesn't have a response, uh, it's very hard for the one that didn't have the patrons to come back. But we saw earlier that um, you can just <laughs> counter your opponent's patrons with more patrons, and then they counter your more patrons with more patrons of their own. And then eventually yeah. one player runs out of cards. <laughs> And the player yeah. who got the Battle Rage win. So Yeah, one of the key crazy. things we saw was like in that situation where you both get the patrons, the one who drew more tends to be favored because they just trade out patrons and then it's a situation where it's like, okay, you have four cards, I have seven. Like, good luck. I mean, a patron is one of those decks that their card draw really snowballs upon itself with that Battle Rage. So if you get into a situation where all else is equal and you just have less cards... You're very unfavored. Yeah. But both of these players look to have pretty similar list, both sporting that shield block. Uh, we didn't actually see too much of Impact's list. I believe his match ended pretty quickly. So he just won with that huge, uh, huge frothing out of a Death Lord. We, we've <laughs> actually kind of seen that happen twice to uh, to Logan, unfortunately. But pretty nuts. Yeah, we, we haven't really get, gotten to see any of his tech choices. I mean, there's Loot Hoarder, uh, one or two Unstable Ghouls. A lot of people are favoring two, though, nowadays. Harrison Jones is a tech card some people put in, and that can be a really big deal, deal in the mirror match. And he's actually just going to choose to pass on turn two. So, foregoing armor to enable his Battle Rage for later, citing that's worth it, whereas Roger is just like, nope, I want to go. I want to play my stuff. I want to draw more stuff. He just wants to get stuff. Uh, and it's yep. interesting, Impact doesn't have a Battle Rage, so he's very much thinking into the future. And um, yeah. Roger could have actually chosen not to attack even. like If you honestly... Basically, one player is saying, I don't want to... I want to take damage, and the other player is saying, I don't want to take damage, and so... They're kind of going against each other's mindsets, in which case one of them is usually wrong. Uh, but it's going to be really hard to find out who was wrong, because Impact's more going for like a chance here. He's thinking, okay, if I draw Battle Rage, I want it to be activated. Another reason is, might just because he didn't want to get his Armorsmith killed for free by Fire War Axe. Roger took so long on turn two to decide whether or not to just play at Armorsmith. A lot of times players will play a Fire War Axe just naked, on turn two and patron versus patron. Yeah. Um, and so if he, he didn't have a fireworks of his own to deal with the Armorsmith on the backswing, so he might have just said, you know what, I just don't feel like having my Armorsmith killed for free. Yeah, so. and this is about to get really rough really fast for uh, Impact. It's going to be four patrons coming out for Roger this turn. I can't see him doing anything else. He's just going to snap go to that. And Impact does not have a great response. He can clear off one with an inner rage, clear off another with an execute, and fiery war axe one. So, I mean, he can survive, but then that leaves up one. And one is all that patrons really need to keep going with that reproduction. Yep, and Impact does that. He doesn't really develop too much else. Um... He's got slam, but that doesn't really help his case because he already had execute to clear off the 3-2. Yeah, and then doing all this, he's going to allow his opponent to build up armor. Armor doesn't matter too much because if you gain control of the board and your opponent doesn't have a way to deal with it, you can get through all of that armor anyway, but uh, it still just makes it that much harder to pu push together like one-turn kills later on in the game. Yeah, the main thing I think armor does is it, like you just said, prevents you from really going with one of the few counter strategies to patron development, which is... Oh, by the way, I just have two frothings. Good game. Yeah. <laughs> like, it. that is one of the few ways that counters you pushing out as many patrons as possible. And uh, we even see Roger foregoing Emperor Thoris, and because it wasn't on very relevant cards, he's just going to put out that unstable ghoul. And now we might see that situation where Impact thinks his best choice is to just counter patron. But... Well, he can force it so that he has more patrons based off of just the space on the board from Roger. Yeah. It can get really awkward uh, because, of course, Roger does have that armor smith and he has that no mission banner, which 
threaten your patrons. So he's not going to go for patrons. He's just going to play two armor smiths and armor up. So spacing it out, decide to take it slow. Roger is only representing uh, seven damage, so impact does have some time. I think dealing with these armor smiths is pretty important, though. Just because you don't want to put your opponent into a situation that you're in right now where you're going to have a ridiculous health lead because your armor smith managed to stick on the board. And at, at this point, your armor smith is like one of the least of, of impact's worries because. He's got to be afraid of the, the Grim Patrons propagating and just well, doing too much damage. Now, kind of going back to what you said, um, Roger can't even get that many more Patrons because he has so much stuff on board. But I think the Acolyte is fine because you're okay with not getting a Patron as long as you're also getting cards. So here come the Whirlwinds. And Impact will also be able to clear off one more Patron with his axe yep. after all is said and done. Yep. It's going to be a lot of armor, a lot of cards, and a lot of patrons. That's all I know. <laughs> looks well, like it's once... going to be six for, for impact. And I don't think it'll be that many, because right now they're blocked here. Uh, I think they die, and then the death rattle goes off. Yeah. So well, he'll have... Still, uh, only two. Yeah, only two. And one and of them will be killed. One of them's going to die, and so now suddenly Impact is in a great spot. Roger does have a lot of health, so he again has a lot of time. It's not like Impact got a battle rage off. Um, Roger can clear off at least three. He could clear off a fourth within a rage if he chose if he chooses to. Clear off a fifth with slam. So he could clear off all but one, but it would be a fresh three three one. Um, and then he can develop, like, Emperor Thorison, uh, reduce the cards in his hand. He has a Grim Patron combo coming up. Maybe Looking something like cool. that. Of course, Impact would be able to punish that with the Cruel Taskmaster. So a very intricate mirror match. I mean, it, it kind of has come a long way from players thinking, okay, it's just GG as soon as the turn 5-4 turn Patrons come out. Roger had that this game. And it's still very much a game. Yeah. And will he decide to enrage the last patron? I can see him save, save it for next turn. Yeah. yeah. He's going to save it. That makes a lot of sense because he has his own patron combo. And that 3 1 patron isn't really a threat when it just dies to whirlwind. He draws Frothing Berserker next turn. I think it's just. Oh, he won't have enough mana. To play Uncivil Ghoul as well, so only get one and, Whirlwind effect. Impact's going to get his own Emperor. It's not a huge Emperor, but... And, and, I mean, he might not even choose to play it. He really needs to weigh if he should be Cruel Taskmastering here and maybe developing Unstable Ghoul just to get more patrons, or if he really wants to get that Emperor out. He's going to start with Shield Block, though. Wouldn't be surprised to just see him duplicate the patron here and even just coin out that Unstable Ghoul. Well, definitely going to think it over. Frothing so, Berserker would be lethal, I think. He probably would, yeah. Nope, not going to draw it, but he does have his own patron combo. And I feel like now we're at the point where if Roger gets this off cleanly and kills off all the patrons, he's basically in the driver's seat to win. Both yeah. players have exhausted so many resources. It's like, whoever gets it off last now is the one. You want to get it off first, but also last. Yeah. He's got to uh, he's gotta do this. Uh, he, can make, he can make six of his own patrons. I mean, I, if, he, if he just trades in the 3-3 three, three now, yeah. He's going to get, he's going to spawn a third. War one's going to hit and give him three more. He could he, easily clear off what's left. And, and, I mean, this puts him so far ahead. All he needs to really consider is how best to play around the counterattack from Impact. Like, say if Impact's cards were more relevant than they were, like uh, Warsong Patron, how do you play around that best? How do you play around Whirlwind best? Yeah. 
Because there is that problem of filling up your board too much. Gonna kill off a 5 1. And yeah, now back to impact. Not much going. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he can accolade a pain and cycle with enrage, but uh, he's staring at 17 damage on the board, so he's just going to go ahead and concede out. There really wasn't um, any chance for him to come back in that game. I mean, we've yeah. said that before. For play yeah, for fun. You never know. You never know. But you do, uh, you do really have to always consider, as the player, what is the worst, worst, worst case scenario, and is there a way I can play around it? Mm -hmm. Usually there isn't. But I mean, in, in Logan's case, there was. You just don't play Haunted Creepy. You don't play Death Lord. Yep. And then you're fine. Literally nothing can beat you. But, yep, sometimes that can happen. You can slip up and fall into the most ridiculous of circumstances being your downfall. So we're going to move on to game number two here. Roger is going to throw out the Druid this time around. Impact going to throw out the Patron once again. Confident that he can find a victory pretty early with Patron, which is usually the case for most of these matches. Yep. And so, we do see a go. really nice hand for oh, Roger. Like, man. Just an insanely good hand, because not only does he have the acceleration, he has the Harrison to protect him from any unfair stuff from the Patron side. Yes. Oh, uh, no! And there's Emperor, even. Wow. This is getting more and more ridiculous. Sometimes you just have to sit back and say, well, that's a druid. Yep. I mean, this is one of the reasons a lot of players don't like losing to druid. It's, it's not necessarily over. I mean, Patron does a lot of unfair things, too. But... Looks like maybe Impact threatens enough here that it's going to disrupt what Roger wanted to do. Instead, he's going to Wrath, Innervate, Coin out the Druid of the Claw. So he yeah. does forego the very, very powerful play he had. But I think this sets him up very well as well. Yeah. He's probably hoping for Harrison next turn, which he is going to get value off of it, but it is going to kill off his Druid of the Claw, so that's uh, slightly awkward, but at the same time, he's going to pretty much leave an empty board, uh, but with a Harrison, his opponent's not going to have a weapon, and he's going to be able to draw a card and set up for an Emperor the following turn, so it's going to work out pretty well in the end. I'm surprised he didn't kill the... Oh, I guess he's just going to push face... Yep. A little bit weird, because now... Oh, Slam yeah, now... Slam Whirlwind. I think I would have just taken it and... Yeah. Um, killed the Armorsmith off while I could, but... I guess it, he really valued the extra damage to face. It is just a 1-1, one -one, but a 1-1 one -one can be the difference between enabling Execute and not, so... Maybe next turn, uh, the Emperor is a little weaker. It also enables, like, a Despite top deck... Yeah. He's really debating on whether or not he wants to even use it or just leave the 5-1 the a lot, but I really just don't think there's too much of a choice. So, he manages to yep. deal with the board, but now he needs to find a way to deal with the Emperor Thor's hand, because you leave this up a couple turns in a row, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Execute off the top would be the Nuts. Well, doesn't quite get that, and I... Yeah, you have to dig with shield block here. You need something more. Well, Taskmaster won't do it, and so that Emperor's gonna live. And I could see it running into that uh, Acolyte, and then him just dropping Dr. Boom. Looks like it's gonna swipe uh, Shade instead, though. Yeah, he's gonna try and push damage. Really want to get those cards out of the way as quick as possible because they could represent a lot of health, a lot of cards later on. And mm -hmm. I think he really doesn't want to throw the five damage of the Emperor into an Acolyte of Pain. That never feels like yeah. Swipe yeah, is not that great is, of a card. 
there always is a question when you develop something like Dr. Boom, but you give up five damage to do it. What are you actually gaining at the end of the day? Mm-hmm. And now, I mean, it it just looks like Thorson's going to live another turn. If Impact can buy some time, he does have a sick hand, but he needs Emperor he, or he needs a lot Emperor, of mana. Yeah. I don't think he's going to... He's only going to have a, two more turns to try and come back. I mean, probably, I'd say Unstable Ghoul Patron, maybe, but then he all he needs is a spot removal to, to deal with the Patron. Yeah. You're at the point now where um, Combo does, what, 25 damage? And Next turn, 26 with, damage. Well, with two Emperor activations, you know Combo is very likely to happen. Armor up. Pass. Very likely to at least be there. Oh, no. So, there are some shenanigans that could be done with patrons into boombots, but that's going to have to be it this turn. I mean, he's going to have to get just insane... I mean, I don't even know what, what it could be. Just good hits with the boombots, and then... Even on the backswing, Roger has a Savage Roar and a Swipe. That Like, the problem is Impact didn't get the, uh, the Emperor off. Meanwhile, Roger got three off. Potentially more, even if he doesn't finish the game this turn. Oh, jeez. Yeah. What can he even do? He can Warsong Commander Patron, and then throw him into the boom bots, and then what? Kill the Shade <laughs> and potentially the Emperor, best and case scenario? And then what? Yeah. I mean, he can, like... I, that's what you gotta do, no. I think. Yeah, that's it. There's not, not really else. anything else. Yep, you have to go for it. Looks like he might go for Whirlwind instead, but it's going to leave up a lot of damage, and I mean, I think that might be it. That's going to, at the very least, leave up 12, 6 from the Savage Roar, and 4 from the Swipe. No, it's going to leave up even more than 12. That's 15. That's way over lethal, so. Yeah. That's going to do it. Roger going to take game 2 as well. Impact kind of with the desperation play here. You can't really fault him. Uh, he he did need to make some winning play. Uh, but yeah, I believe he was even just dead to Savage Roar by quite a quite a large margin. Yeah, Impact's going to watch his hopes of making it to the feature tournament slip away slightly as well, Roger takes a 2 to 0 vic- victory or yeah, 2 to 0 lead. Still in it. So, yeah, he's uh he's got potential, but Roger has three opportunities to win with Warlock. We saw the Warlock deck though was Roger's that, weak link in the first series of yeah. the day that he played. Yeah, I feel like it doesn't have any matchups from Impact side that really jump out as like, oh yeah, Warlock's gonna crush that deck. Yeah, uh, re- reminder, it is like the the Demon Zoo, so uh, not many amazing matchups. I would say Patron's not bad, Rogue's not bad, Hunter is pretty bad, which is why Impact's going to throw it out first. Uh, again, this is kind of the common case where when you're down 2-0, you can go with your best matchups in order to kind of bring the series closer. And if you can bring it to Game 5, get a little bit of energy back in you thinking, maybe I can win this. And this is the super aggressive Hunter. From Impact, who see runs yeah. Saucy Deccans. Uh, you said probably in place of the Worgen Infiltrators earlier. Mm-hmm. He's got Explosive Trap, we know, at least. We saw two Arcane Golems in the Mulligan. We see a Wolf Rider here, so... It's an aggressive deck. Very aggressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And... Roger's thinking but decides to tap as opposed to playing Abusive Sergeant, not really trading into anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got the Void Caller and the Malganus. Uh, there is a... There's no Owl from Impact. There's an Owl from Roger, but... He, in-game boss would be pretty perfect here, but other than that, he doesn't really have any good plays. Yep. Oh. That's never... Just going to throw down some 2-1s just to contest. Which will contest, but most yeah. likely... Well, it's, it's important he did, because if not, then a Wolf Rider would just be slamming his face this turn with no downside. Yeah. Uh, Is there any merit to just playing Unleash? I guess you really want to save that for Implosion. For but... Implosion, yeah. I think he might think, okay, I can get a better Unleash than this. Yeah. But... 
I would assume we'll just see two trades come out from Roger. Oh no, he's gonna implosion. This is this is kind of nice because it doesn't open him up to knife juggler unleash just yet, which is there. It does wow. open him up to explosive trap though. Yeah, and then he can have knife juggler unleash for. Yeah. In the future, you know that warlocks are gonna build up a board eventually. Yep. So, I'd like to see him play that Nerubian egg and go face. Ooh. Okay. Well. I guess he just doesn't want the egg down yet. He's going to taunt it up next turn. Uh, I think he was aware that was explosive trap, and he's going dangerously low against an aggro hunter, but he does have that Malganus that could come out. Yeah. It's going to be pretty dangerous, though. Impact does have some burn. Mm -hmm. He used a quick shot early on to take out the Void, the, uh, void Walker, but he does yep. have Kill Command. Uh, I mean, 16 health is very, very low. Impact can piece together lethal over the next couple turns here. He's going to put him at 10. This he's Defender Vargas is going to have to do work. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, no, because he, uh, he can get the Malganus out guaranteed. No matter what, unless he top a, a Doom Guard. Nope. So he can go uh, trade in, taunt up an Egg and a Malganus if he wants, or he could not taunt up the Malganus. <laughs> yeah, it, Impact reels his head back because like, now it's like, oh, no. That's literally the worst thing that could happen. And, he, yeah, he's going to protect the Malganus even more. And the Flame Imp all is get, gets buffed to he needs an Owl. And he doesn't have an Owl. And, and he's, he's got Juggler Unleash. If he kills the Egg, he's dead next turn. Oh, Unless he God. kills everything. So there's 15, 18, 20. There's 18 showing. Yeah, he needs to kill the Flame Imp. Well, decent juggles. Oh, that's a Only bad one. one goes to face, but, I mean... I, I... You gotta feel bad about clearing off the... The egg. I, yeah, he's not going to. But... There's a Malganus. There's another Void Collar that he can taunt up. It's gonna get the Malganus buff. Like you said, I mean, at this point, he's gonna need an Owl and then some going to kill off everything, and now he's going to make two huge taunts, and he's immune still. Yep. And now, I mean, Impact's just dead that, next Now year. he's watching his, his dream slip away, because that's it. That's, yeah. Is there any way he even survives? There's going to be five plus four. He's alive by one, so he's going to get the hero power off. And and he has a, a a faint hope of like quick shot into kill command maybe. If there isn't a draw here immediately from Roger. Roger could tap for one damage, but you can't do that, right? It doesn't really it puts you dead to kill command, so no way you do that. Yeah. Um, there's an explosive trap in the deck probably for impact, so I guess kill command is still still good as an out. Like, you kill Command Face, trade in your Scientist. In fact, uh, Roger did it for him. But that's that's not a kill command. He has to set everything to two or lower. And he can't. Can't do it. So that's it. Wow. That's a pretty heartbreaking game because that's... It, you look so at just like... He, he, was even, oh. he was even still close. like. Mm -hmm. And he was four off with a double Argus Malganus draw. It's clearly a very favored matchup for the Hunter, but that, it's not going to do it. So, Roger checks in for... Goes ahead and makes sure he checks for misdirection. Misdirection, too, yep. With the one. Sequencing that just about as perfectly as he could have. And Roger takes a 3-0 victory in the finals over Impact. And Roger secures his spot in the feature tournament this weekend. Yep. Very dominant performance from him. Uh, maybe, you know, you got to feel for impact with a bit of bad draws there in that last series, but Rogers, Rogers lineup working out just about as best as he could have hoped and played out all, all those matches. I think very well, you even said at the end, like making sure to sequence around traps perfectly, like not taking anything for granted. He's going to play around misdirection even. So. Yep. Yep. Very well played. And, uh, Roger will also get himself 10 world championship points, adding on to, uh, a a sum that he already has quite a few of, $125 as well. 
and uh, 10 Geico points. So even if he doesn't manage to place in the feature tournament high enough to get to PAX, he still secures some Geico points, which he can then use to try and qualify anyway. Uh, Impact still goes home with $75, 5 World Championship points, and 9 Geico points. So uh, he still has to be very proud of his performance throughout the tournament. Uh, yesterday he made it all the way through the qualifier, won his first match today. And so definitely can't be too disappointed. I'm sure he is getting 3-0'd in the finals, but making it this far is still very impressive. Yeah. I mean, for him and for other people in his position with those Geico points, I think they're going to come out in full force tomorrow in those open tournaments. Mm -hmm. There's one left for EU and NA. It's going to be a mad race to try and qualify for that last feature tournament. This is kind of it's crunch time for qualifying for PAX. Of course, if you guys at home want to sign up for those tournaments, there's one left for each server. So if you're just getting in, you're a bit late, but there's still a chance if you win these tournaments, you qualify directly into the future tournaments. Uh, yeah. check, him, check him out at liquidheart.com. Yep. And, of course, make sure you head over to geico.onog.gg during the next break if you guys want more information about the tournament or if you want your chance to win an official TSM PC. Um, and you can also get a Geico quote while you're there as well. Big shout out to Geico uh, for being the title sponsor for this event. Uh, wouldn't be possible with, without them. So we are going to take a quick five minute break. Uh, again, as a reminder, we are doing a double header today. So we're going to move right into the NA qualifier number seven after the next break. So we have plenty more action uh, to come. But we'll see you guys in five minutes. More Summer Circuit action continues right after this.